I have definitively proven many things. Remember, Masons said they wished to subjugate people with their intellect, not necessarily their cash. And communism is a system where the government decides who is the best man for the job and then places them in those jobs. Therefore, it is quite feasible that one may use their secret networks and their perceived intellect to subjugate men without capital. Now, I think this is all very interesting because there are different ways that your employers can make it easy for you and there's different ways that they can make it hard for you. And gang stalking has highlighted that. You know, I still make basically the same amount of money I did before the gang stalking started. But my employers and their secret network have made it harder for me in these last um, four or five years. And it's very interesting how that works. You know, it definitely shows you how communism <clears throat> is just another system of control where secret societies use their network to oppress. It is no, not a really, really a uh, logical solution. The major difference here is that it leaves no leeway for somebody to make a lot of money to challenge the secret societies in charge. You know, it's not necessarily the system that is oppressing people in capitalism. It is the people behind the system and their greater network of spies, collaborators, and subordinates. Now, I personally do not have, um, you know, I do not have high hopes for society. You know, it, it would be very easy for me to use my talents, my intellect, to fit in with them and to oppress everybody else and sell out to the New World Order, obviously. Very easy, walk in the park, you know. I do everything they want me to, they'll pretty much get off my back. They won't stop the gang stalking entirely, it will greatly reduce it. It's simply a matter of you know, complimenting for <laughs> to try to be civil about it. Um, the right people taking your drugs, um, turning to the right people for you know help, uh, quote unquote help. Um, you know, praising the the right people publicly, feeding into their agenda, making it so that it will not be in their best interest to continue to play you out. If you say that you see things their way and that you promote their agenda uh, and causes and philosophies. Okay, a lot of people, they think, well, you know, if they take their medicine, that it doesn't entirely go away. And that's partially true. It's not going to entirely, or take the medicine they want you to, you know. You have to also do what they want you to do. You know, it's, what's going on is similar to being in school where the teacher is punishing you. You know, you simply do what the teacher wants you to do. You know, it's not necessarily just take Ritalin or something. That's just part of it. You know, they also want you to make, help them make things go smoothly. If not, be another bootlicking pupil. Now, me personally, that is not a course of action that I would consider. And the only reason I bring it up is I want you all to understand that what is going on is about ideology, philosophy, and control. The Masonic war against radical Islam or fanatical Islam is exactly what they said in Morals and Dogma. Masonry has declared war on radicalism or fanaticism. You know, so when they say that they've declared war on this, you know, a lot of people don't understand that they're not just saying that they're declaring war on ISIS or Al Qaeda. They're declaring war on, you know, religion as an idea that is upheld to the T. So that is why they have also declared war on me and others like me. You know, if you are not willing to compromise with the Babylon system to worship in a way they want you to to think in a way they want you to and to have it re, you know be reflected in your behavior 
then they come down on you. And there's different levels they come down on you. And I, I do believe that most of us have had many warnings before they started putting us in these programs. People trying to quote unquote reason with us. And the more frustrated those people are, or the more serious they felt that we, you know, a, a threat they felt to their system, they felt, they, they felt that we were, you know, the more likely we were to be put in these programs. And the, you know, so yeah. Um, and so what they're doing to us is in many ways what they feel that we're doing to them making it harder for them to do what they're trying to do you know mocking them aggravating them making them look bad um, there, there's a level of that too um, one, one of the repetitive statements they, they say is whatever you do to us you know whatever you do you know we'll, we'll make sure it's done to you and it's you know they're absolutely wrong I mean there's no there's no way to pretend that they're right they're wrong I have definitively proven that Masons are the main control mechanism behind the system. And I think to, to, one way to look at it, which is an oversimplification, I believe, is to say that Masons are the secret society that controls the system. They're another in, in, uh, institution or instrument of control. Saying that is sort of like saying, well, the government controls the system or, you know, the law enforcement controls the system. Yes, they're, you know, these are people that the, peop the, the main controllers collaborate with to control the system, but they're not really, you know, the tip top of the pyramid. Those people probably are Masons as well, but they're, they have dual membership or more than one membership and, you know, they're controlling this. So yes, I've definitively proven that they are covertly drugging me. Today, they weren't able to do much other than gas me a little bit because I went to a, a Chinese uh, fast food place I've never been to before. And so, you know, I come off a lot more reasonable, a lot more logical, cogent, articulate, well-spoken, what have you. And when you couple that with me taking the time to groom my beard, put on a nice shirt, which comes with having a clearer mind, you know, and feeling more healthy as a result of having less drugs in my system. I now present myself in a way that it's very palatable, very socially acceptable, above and beyond normal, even respectable. So now then, why should it matter? I've brought this up many times, why should it matter? Especially when somebody tells you over and over again that they're being covertly drugged. Why does it matter how I present myself? You know, if somebody put a gun to somebody's head and said, drink, 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 and then they were telling their story about how they were forced to drink, and they drank a whole lot, like a fifth of Hennessy or some, a whole lot of alcohol. Should we expect them to be, you know, like a fucking politician or a president or something in their presentation? When they tell you what happened? I mean, why, why should it matter? When there are countless victims of this system, why should it matter how they relay, how they communicate that information to you? That is very, that, that's very disturbing to me. One of the most disturbing things even, besides, you know, obviously the 65 million preventable deaths or over 65 million a year is the most disturbing. And I might have, because my statistics were about three or four years old in some cases, I might have, they might have reduced a little bit, but the things that I didn't include, you know, more than make up for it. So yes, it is 65 million plus preventable. Uh, yeah, so again, one going back to what I was saying, one of the most disturbing things other than the death and the, you know, the drugging and the rapes and the pedophilia is that when a victim is trying to tell you what's going on, we will prejudge that person 
based on our misconceptions that mental health has fed into, the media has fed into, these you know, entertainment industry has fed into. We'll prejudge them. And I use example often, quite often that if a rape victim is screaming bloody fucking murder, you know, so to speak, are we gonna say, well, you know, you're hysterical, what you say doesn't matter. Now, if we're in front of them, we'll say, you know, calm down, tell us slowly. No one's gonna think anything of it to having to tell that, that person that. But when the person is telling you it on YouTube or something, no one's there to say, calm down, take a deep breath. No one's there to say that. They're telling you it in a way that you would expect them to tell you. And if they look disrocked, then that's all the more believable to the insightful observer. So when I gather my thoughts, and I'm allowed to gather my thoughts, I've allowed myself, I'm avoiding the covert drugging, you know, uh, going out of my way to avoid it. What then could they possibly say? Their argument that the people have these, you know, that, oh, he has seizures or mental illness and, that, and they have certain triggers, you know, and that, well, this person has, you know, key to this, it's a preconceived notion that um, the food might be drugged. Most of the time when I'm drugged, I, t I point out and I, I take note because I'm studying this very carefully to understand exactly what's going on. And I'm sure you can tell by the notes on the walls and the 10,000 plus sources and all the videos that I analyze and reanalyze. So, nine times out of 10, I'm not thinking, are these things drugged? I'm on the road driving. I'm texting somebody. I'm on the phone. I'm uploading a video, putting tags on it, and then it hits me, oh man, oh wow. You know, I'm trying hard to focus, and I'm focusing on what I'm doing. I'm being mindful of what I'm doing. I'm not thinking, this food might be drugged. And I'm doing it to the best of my ability until it overwhelms me, and then I have to stop. That, my friends, is not a trigger of a mental illness but the symptoms of covert drugging. And when I am in a very logical, agreeable state of mind, such as right now, and I look back at it, I make the same determinations. So why then am I consistently being treated unfairly? Why have women shunned me? We, when we watch these movies, cartoons, we almost always see the hero in a bad situation. He's getting beat up or he's in prison for something he didn't do. No one says, well, that hero, you know, because he's, he looks disrot and tore up right now, you know, I'm disgusted with him. No women say, oh, I can't stand it when, you know, John claude Van Damme or whoever, you know, he has, has, has bruises on his face and a blood, you know, his shirt is ripped and bloody nose and, you know, whatever. No one says anything like that. So why do they say that in my videos? Why are people conditioned to detest a hero? And especially in the phases of being a hero that we are all taught we are all programmed not to resent or to be turned off by. Why then are they able to then turn around and say, well, because of the way this transcendent hero is dressed, because of how his beard is unkempt, because of his presentation when we are victimizing him, we want you to label him as mentally ill. And then when you put these people in debate, what do they say? They say, well, I'm not an expert. You know, I don't know if there's something wrong with you. And they all know very well that if somebody goes to a mechanism of control, such as psychiatry, saying that the social controllers are abusing him, 99.9% .9 of the time, they will say there's something wrong with him. Thank you.